Welcome, welcome. I've got a good one for you today. As Count Floyd from Second City TV would say, Ooh, scary, scary. <laughs> Maybe it won't be too scary, but it should be fun. And uh, this is, uh, well, let's just get down to it. So again, so much goes back to that gentleman, Michael Faraday, doesn't it? And if we want, we'll look again at his law of induction. So here's one way of stating it. Whenever a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field, that's what I want to emphasize, varying magnetic field, an electromagnetic force, an EMF, is induced. So in general, when you have things like a boost or a buck boost circuit, you capture the collapse of the magnetic field, and there's a, a reverse um, current that in the buck boost that comes out from the collapse of the magnetic field. But when you have a setup like this, why not capture the magnetic field as it establishes? I'm not sure if I'll do a great job explaining this, but you know, here's the buck with this is obviously the positive. And let's say this is DC, which I think it would, because these are DC converters, um, this is DC. So this is your positive and it's blocked. Now, if you, with this setup, just put in a diode the other way, you'd have a short. Now you could set it up this way, the diode the other way, and that's your boost. But what you have here is things happen in stages. So you can capture the establishing magnetic field and at the end of it you just have your cap charged up ready to do the buck boost part the same as as before but when you establish the magnetic field can you capture like you would with boosts so in other words since you have everything opto isolated why not capture the boost and the buck boost? And I, I probably didn't do a great job explaining that, but uh, anyways, we'll go on. So let's start off simple. And you have two opto-isolated relays. One goes to the positive of your bus line, one goes to the negative. There's a single switch that goes to here and turns both of those switches on. When that happens, power flows into here and power flows into here, and you see the other end of the other uh, part of the switch there goes out to there, and so it charges the positive and the negative. Now, what I've done a fair amount of then is, okay, we've charged the cap, and now we'll discharge it across a coil. So pretend this is your coil. It's not a coil, but pretend. You would place the coil from here to that switch. And then that would discharge. And you would discharge the cap. And as the, the cap discharges, the magnetic field collapses. And you can grab that changing magnetic field and put it off into uh, another cap or put it to a battery, whatever you want to do. And you can buy those off the shelf you know, buck boost converters, and depending on the Q factor, they can be 80, 90, 95% efficient. So now, what if you want to capture, instead of this discharge, which for the moment we'll just leave here, what if you wanted to capture the changing magnetic field? Let's go back to, all you need is varying magnetic field. It doesn't have to be collapsing. What if you want to capture the magnetic field as it establishes? Well, you could put a coil between here and here and take a diode. This will be in a blocking configuration. Run the diode out to one end of a cap. And the orange line is now a coil. And the other end of your coil goes to the other end of a cap. Ta-da! So I just have this coil lying around. It's just a small size, and I've characterized it a lot. It's pi filer. We're not doing anything. I got too confused with the whole one-wire power. I'll go back to it another time. So we're just using one strand of it, 
and we'll replace the orange strand with this. And there's nothing. So, um, power's getting to the bus lines, but it's not getting to the cap. Did I tell you, I think I might have mentioned this, it, I've already tapped this like years ago. I tapped this out by hand and I know that it works, but I also had it set up earlier today and as I'm a little bit better with solid state relays now. So it works and it's really cool once it works. Okay, it, it helps if you don't put the positive line and the negative line both to the negative bus. That was deliberate. It was deliberate. I'm fine. Sorry. Okay, so now we have power to the cap. And let's uh, change out that orange line for a coil. And we can see it's working. Boom. Cap charges up. Boom. And it's charging up through this coil. So let's get the timing to a reasonable, reasonable speed. So now we're charging the coil, I'm sorry, we're charging the cap through this coil and then discharging it through this line. Yeah, we're charging it for 800 microseconds and then just let it shut off for 200 and then we discharge it um, for 200 because there's not really any induction there so we can discharge it quickly and then shut it off for 200. As usual though, it's, um, not as straightforward as one might think when you when you first get the idea. So here's what here's what you see on the oscilloscope as you charge it. <laughs> Isn't that funky? So there are a couple notable things here. Let's just freeze that. This, this I gotta sneeze. Okay, we're back. So this is oscillating during the on time that you're charging. So that's interesting. And what we could see, I'm not gonna do it for you right now, but if we ran a frequency sweep, just a decrease in this time, we would see that this amp draw goes up and down depending on where this ends up out of there. Now, remember, we're at 10 volts. This thing is ending up here below 10 volts. I'll, I'll lengthen out the low time here for you just so you can see it a little more clearly. And give me a second. Yeah. So that's when we came out. It, it's not even at 10 volts, but let's decrease it a little bit, the timing. I don't want to spend an hour like getting into the weeds on this, but I'm just saying that you're not losing capacitance. So, you know, if you're at 10 volts, one farad, 10 coulombs, 20 volts, uh, one farad, 20 coulombs. It, it's one to one. There's, there's, it, it's a beautiful transformation of voltage. Now you're not gonna go, you're only gonna be able to transform it from, you know, 10 to like 18 or 19, um, that's that's your Q factor there. It's gone from like 10 to uh, let's say 18. So it's a decent Q factor, not great. But that's, as I said, that's a feature, not a bug. Now, the next thing is, can we get anything out of it? Okay, so I've put a voltmeter across this. Now we have this cap. Now we have, here is the place where we're charging through the coil and here's the positive there's a backwards diode coming off the positive going to here and then we have the other end which connects there so I'm going to put a line from here to the other end so this is that yellow line there and I'm going to put it in that's 95 millivolts putting it in now boom that sucks what's going on Okay, well, son of a gun, we're learning together. So previously, I didn't have the oscilloscope attached. See, it's at 5.294, and I'm thinking, like, why is that? How? Yeah, but recall that this is grounded. This, so in other words, I just put an earth ground there. So if we remove this, now we get, oh, come on, come on. 
There we go. No, what? No. Okay. Now we have it. So I just learned two two things. Am I recording? Yes. So now it's going up to 20 volts. Okay. Now we got it. So I can't connect the um, oscilloscope because we don't want an earth ground going to here. And um, you still have to hunt around for the place where it's going to transform voltage well. But once you found that, which is about at like 100 microseconds, you could hunt around for the very best place. Then, when we connect this to here, see that is your amp draw 0.65, and we're at 33 millivolts. And now there's a voltage going up, and there's your amp draw. For a while, it was really down there. So that's nice. That's a good thing. This cap isn't matched for, you know, the best place of the Q factor here. I, I could put in a, a different coil. I'm not going to bother right now. I'll show you one other thing that's, that really surprised the hell out of me. So I turned the diode around here, which this is now a... Yeah! It's not going to focus for us. But it's now a conducting diode out to there. And I guess the isolation is from the cap. I thought it was going to be a short. Look what it's doing. That crazy thing. So you know what that makes me wonder is, you know, shoot one out like that. You have another diode the other way, shoot it out to another cap the way it was just set up before. That's almost neither here nor there. The take home point of the video, and the whole reason I made the video, is you can charge the cap and you can capture the spike and charge the cap at the same time. And as we saw when we connected this, when it was loaded or not loaded, there wasn't a big change, it, it actually decreased um, in terms of, of amp draw for the cap. Now there's a little bit of complexity as we saw on the oscilloscope in terms of in terms of getting the timing right and if I had enough induction to slow this down enough it would be easier to to illustrate but but you can do that and then at the end of that you have your your charge cap you, you shot a spike out here and then this, you know, this guy is where you'd put another coil in. This is where you'd normally put a coil in for like a buck boost setup. And the whole time he's been isolated, he's just going from here out to this opto-isolated end of this relay. So the timing is entirely separate, separate, and they're they're insulated by by the the MOSFET in this um, solid state relay. And so that that uh, presents some interesting options. Oh, I want to get back to spinning relays, I mean spinning rotors and things like that. I just can't leave this right now. I mean, and, you know, I mean, I get the cool kids do all the, the one-wire power stuff. I, you know, I'm not like, I don't think I'm advanced enough for that. I mean, this, you don't even, you're not even worrying about doing, uh, you know, a bi-file or one-wire power transmission and things like that. This is just looking at um, more straightforward things. Now, I illustrated that that diode in either configuration seems to, to work, and that needs to be explored more. And as I've been building this, the other thing that I'm thinking is that if you put a second coil, just, you know, during the charging phase, here we're charging up the positive. If you put a second coil at the negative, I think they'd be isolated across the cap. And so you might be able to draw off another there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> How many can you draw off? But I, I kind of feel one thing I'm going to need to do um, to look at this further is to have more than one coil, to have identical coils in terms of capacitance. Uh, I'm sorry, in terms of induction. <laughs> um, so identical coils in terms of induction. And I want 
the identical coils to be high Q. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is use the 3D printer to build some don't cough coils. Don't cough. Actually, I'm, I'm not German. I shouldn't say that. I, I might be like a 16th, but um, the dunce cap coils. Yeah, you know, dunce cap coils. They'll be high Q. And build at least two of them that are identical uh, induction and have more fun from there. So that's it. I just wanted to show that you can also capture the spike when a cap is charging as well as when the cap is discharging and the magnetic field is collapsing. So um, stay healthy, keep smiling everyone, and talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.